earlier this year I published a video about Ofcom's proposals to change the ham radio license. Well things have moved on you may actually have a Christmas present or well, not so much a Christmas present it could be a New Year's present from Ofcom because I've just published the draft new ham radio regulations that will come into force sometime in 2024. Others will perhaps not regard this as a present, maybe even something they don't want, but I think a lot of you will be very enthusiastic about the changes. You may agree with some of them, perhaps not all of them, but let me give you a warning. It's 105 pages long. You need quite a bit of coffee to keep awake. You don't want to fall into a coma halfway through it. You might miss something important. Yes, this is possibly or probably or even is the biggest change in ham radio licensing for a long, long time. Some would say it's overdue, and I guess it's all about bringing the conditions up to date and to meet the requirements of those that have voiced their opinion as to what should and shouldn't happen with the ham radio license. There's a lot to read. As I said, over a hundred pages. There's a lot of detail there, but there are some highlights. First of all, the novice license, or the foundation license as it's now called, you'll be able to run 25 watts on a lot of the bands. The interme intermediate licenses will now be able to run 100 watts on most of the bands. And the full license holders will actually be able to operate up to 1000 watts. So quite a significant change. Although they don't actually mention it, in the actual license, the current license, it does show that those powers are the radiated power levels. So if you've got two or three dB loss on your coax cable, you can quite legally run a bit more than those power limits. Those power limits apply to the actual affected, well not radiated power, it's the actual affected power delivered to the antenna. So here we are. What else? Well, if you want a two-letter call sign, it looks as if you're going to be able to get it. The original proposal, I think, was that licenses could be reissued after two years. If they lapsed after two years, they could be reissued. Well, I think that's been extended now to five years, um, out of respect to families that might have some objection. So, if you want a two-letter call sign, or whatever call sign you want, and it's lapsed over five years, beyond five years, then you can have it. Unless, of course, other people want it as well. Then there could be a bidding war, couldn't there? What else? Well, the foundation licenses can now actually remote control their stations over the internet, so that'll be, that'll be welcome. And also, the prefixes. You don't now have to use a location prefix. So if you're in Wales, or you're in Scotland, or the Channel Islands, or uh, Northern Ireland, then you don't have to use the full prefix. You can just use G, which means to say that if you're in a contest, your call sign is a bit shorter. And talking about call signs, you're only allowed one. You can't have more than one call sign. Well, I think having more than one call sign is a bit greedy anyway. Of course, if it's a club call, or you've got a uh, contest call, that's okay. But you can't have more than one call sign. Fair deals, I suppose. So this is the biggest change in the amateur radio license for decades. And as I said, it doesn't come into force yet, but it will come into force in 2024. At the bottom of the document, there's your final chance to voice any comments you've got. And there's a, there's a link there to an email address right at the end of the document. So you can, you've still got time to uh, make some suggestions. But I, I, I think that we now are looking at basically what is the final document. How will it be received? Well, I don't know. That's up to you. And I'm sure 
those hams around the world. I think Australia has been itching to change the regulations and probably other countries as well. So whether the UK will take a lead or maybe they've just followed some other countries, who knows? It's interesting stuff. So thank you for watching this video. Also, thank you for your support because we've made our own changes. We're now at Milton Keynes right close to the M1. We've been getting some great reviews on the service, particularly how fast we dispatch goods. So if you're looking for a new transceiver or some accessories, then go on our website or pick up a phone. We'd be more than happy to help you out. We've been going for 50 years, would you believe? Yes. So thank you for watching this video. Much appreciated your support on this channel. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. In the meantime, happy reading. Bye for now.